to another video in this series. This is part three, and we will be taking a look at how we can present the camera or the option to select a photo from the photo library when the user taps on this head image here in the account creation flow. So all of that jazz is going to live in the register view controller. So open that up and let me actually stop this app uh, execution here. And essentially what we want to do is we want to implement this function here that we set up in the previous video, which gets called when the user taps on the head. So to select a uh, image from the photo library or take a picture with the camera, we need to do two things. We A, need to implement the code, which is the obvious thing, but B, and the more important thing that we need to do is head on over to our info.plist and we want to add two permissions in here. And these permissions basically are used for iOS to present one of those permission alerts where uh, I'm sure you've seen it before where it's so-and-so app would like permission to access the camera or to access your photos. Uh, so we need one for the camera and one for the uh, photo library. So start typing privacy space dash space and camera. And we want to give a string here that's going to be shown to the user. So we are going to say, please allow access to take a profile picture. And then we want one more. And this is going to be photo library usage description. And this one is going to be, please allow access to select a photo for your profile. So now that these settings are in here, we can go back to our register view controller. And let me close up all of these other folders that are distracting over here. And we are going to create an extension at the bottom of this class. And I'm going to organize all of the code associated with selecting a picture and the delegate into this extension, just to keep things a little organized. So let's create an extension on register view controller. And we want it to conform to UI image picker uh, controller delegate. And this delegate essentially allows us to get the results uh, of a user taking a picture or selecting a photo from the camera roll. This one that we want in here is image picker data cancel. And of course, this one gets called when the user cancels the uh, taking of a picture or photo selection. And the other one we want is image picker. And this is actually the only other one that uh, is available to us. And this one gets called when the user takes a photo or they select a photo. And we also want to create our own function in here, which is going to present a action sheet. And the action sheet is going to have two options for the user to pick from. The first one is going to be uh, take photo and the second one will be choose photo. So let's go ahead and say funk present photo action sheet. And this function, we're going to call this from this other function that we have up here in which right now we're just printing. And if you recall, this gets invoked when the user taps on that head image. So let's go back down here and implement this function. So we're going to say let action sheet is a UI alert controller. And again, it has a title, message, and presentation style. The title is going to be profile picture. The message will be how will you, uh, rather, how would you like to select a picture? The style will be a action sheet. And we want to add three action buttons to our sheet, a cancel button, a take photo, and a choose photo. So we're going to say action sheet, add action. And the first one that we're going to pick, 
rather create is going to be a UI alert action. And it's going to have a title and a style as well as a handler. So the first one is just going to be the cancel button. So we're going to say cancel. Type is cancel. Handler is nil. And let's copy and paste this twice. Let's fix up that indentation. And the other two will be default types. So an action sheet or an alert controller rather can only have one item be the cancel item. And this one is going to be take photo and this one is going to be choose photo and we want a handler for both of these and we're going to do the underscore in the parameter that comes in here is the action itself but we don't really care about the action so we will uh, essentially just leave it as the underscore in this case and finally we want to present the action sheet so we're going to say present action sheet animated true and this will show our action sheet so let's go ahead and hit command r to build and run and let's make sure our action sheet is popping up so let's go do register and we see down here we've got our sheet so now what we want to do is actually present either the camera or the photo library and once the user uh, basically selects something we want to be able to capture it in here and more importantly, we want to update the image up here with the user's selection. So let's create two functions that are respectively called from these actions, just to keep our code a little more modular. So we're going to say func uh, present camera. And we also want a func present photo picker and let's put this camera one into here we also want to say weak self before this underscore discardable results and we need this so a memory retention loop isn't created now self becomes optional because it's weak so we can call the camera function in here for take photo and the other function we can call in here similarly we're going to say self optional uh, call this function and don't forget to add weak self and this will highlight accordingly now to present a ui image picker controller rather to present a camera uh, view or the photo picker you're going to leverage a ui image picker controller so it's pretty similar how you create this you simply instantiate this you set its source type you can set its delegate Rather, you need to set its delegate so the result is captured in here. And let's see, we also want to make sure that up here we are conforming to the UI navigation uh, controller delegate. We also want to bring that up there because it works with in parity with this delegate. And the other thing I like to do is enable um, allows editing. And this will allow the user to select a cropped out square of the picture once they take the picture or select it from their camera roll. So we'll see that in action in just a moment. And finally, we wanna present that controller. And if we take all of this and paste it into this other function, the only thing we wanna change is the source. So if we see there are three sources here and we're gonna do photo library in this case. And let's see what else in this function where we cancel, we simply want to say picker and we want to call dismiss on it with the animation and completion is nil. In this function, image picker did finish picking with info. This info dictionary, we can grab the, uh, we can actually grab the image from inside this dictionary. So we're going to say let image is ui image picker let's actually print out this info since i don't recall offhand what the keys are for this dictionary but we also want to dismiss the controller similarly and once we have the image uh, in a variable we are going to say self dot image view 
And if you recall, image view in our simulator is the image we show at the top of the form here. We're going to update this guy's image to be the selected image. And again, this we're going to pull out of the info dictionary. I just don't recall what the key is. So we're going to we're going to print it out in the console and figure it out together. So looks like we have an error here. Let's see why this is complaining. This is complaining source type. Let's put a space here. That's why it's complaining. Hit command R to build and run. And one thing I'll mention right off the bat is if you try to invoke the camera from the simulator, you'll notice your app is going to crash. So there, if we go and tap on that, we notice that the app crashes. And the reason it crashes is because, of course, there's no camera that can be invoked. We will later on fix this bug uh, for testing on a simulator just to check if, to see if a camera is available. But if we hit run again and go to register, hit this, and choose the other option. Whoops. Looks like, okay, there it goes. We get the photo library picker, and we can come in here. And let's say we want to choose this image. You notice we have the square crop here, but if we pick a bigger image, let's see if I can find one. There we go, here's a bigger one. This allows editing Boolean that we set, basically gives us a square cutout, and it forces us to pick a square part of the image. So the reason this is nice is because you can set a standard of image sizes for your app, uh, in particular a square, and we're gonna circularize a lot of our images and give it radiuses. Um, so this is pretty nice. So let me, before I select it, expand this, close the left panel, and let's clear this as well. And once we select this, we see that we dismiss that controller and we are printing out the info dictionary. So in this dictionary, let's see what we have. We have a file, there's a UI image picker controller, info key, and so I believe what we can do is we can grab the image by using this info key, which I believe is a, an enum, or possibly not. Let's see, we want There we go, info key, and we want edited image. That's what we want. They should have named this better. So I always, uh, sometimes when I go through this, I always kind of guess and check and see if the autocomplete can help me out before hopping on over to Apple's documentation. Uh, there's a lot of these things that they change up between Swift, Swift versions, so don't ever feel uh, weird about kind of guessing and checking the autocomplete. So basically, off of the controller, there is an info key, and if we click into this, we will see that I think it's an enum, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting, okay. Basically, there's an info key off of here, and that has other properties on it, but it is not an enum. This edited image will give us the cropped image that the user has selected. The other option is original image, or I think they may have just called it image now, if it decides to autocomplete. All right, looks like it's being difficult. So there's crop rect, edited image, image URL, media type. Here we go. The original image is actually the full image, so we could also grab that out of here. But like I mentioned, we care about the square image, so we are going to go with edited image. And let's uncomment this. And we should be in business. This will give us an image. And we actually need to unwrap this uh, selected image to be a image and non-optional. So let's say guard let else return. And we also want to cast this as a UI image. And now the error down here will, here will go away and it will let us assign it to our image views image. So let's hit command R to build and run, and let's make sure that works. So let's hit this. We're going to hit choose. We're going to come in here. We're going to say, let's say this one. And let me scroll to the top here. Let me close my antivirus pop-up. 
and let's select it. And as you can see, we have our image up here. Now, before we wrap up this video, the other thing I'd like to do is round the corners of this image just to give it a nice circular uh, avatar look. So let's come all the way up here and let's find our image view. And we want to set two things on here. So layer masks to bounds is true. And then also what we want to do is we want to come down where we are setting the frame for the image view and view did layout sub views. And in here, we are going to say the layer dot corner radius is the image view dot width divided by 2.0. And basically what this will do is this will create our uh, image to look like a circle. And actually, I lied, we're going to do one more thing just to make it look a little nicer while we're at it. We're going to give this a little border too. So let's say layer border width. We're going to say this is 2. And layer border color is going to be UI color, light gray color, dot CG color. Now go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And let's see what we get. So we see here that we already actually have this nice looking border. I'm not a fan how this image looks, the system image. So we might at some point find our own to bring in. So let's go ahead and hit that choose again. Come in here. Let's select this one. Now, if you were on an actual device, you could zoom this in also. It's just not easy to, easy to do on a simulator since we can't really pinch to zoom. So I'm going to go back and stick with this so we can have a whole image in the square. And let's select it. And like that, we have our image in here. So the reason, of course, we need the user to be able to select an image is when they create an account, we will also upload this to Firebase. So with that being said, if you haven't liked the video already, please make sure you do so down below. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that button while you're at it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.